Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Have you ever wondered if there's an antimatter version of you? If there's an antimatter version of you, why doesn't it annihilate the matter you? Today, we're diving deep into some of the most profound questions about missing antimatter. Why shouldn't we exist at all? How did the idea of antimatter emerge from the equations of physics? Does antimatter explain why the universe and life exist? Does our universe have a twin made of antimatter? What would a mirror antimatter universe look like? If antimatter black holes existed, what would they do? What if a black hole met an antimatter black hole? If matter falls down, does antimatter fall up? Why are the new results at CERN important? Are there antimatter galaxies? Can antimatter be used as an energy source? How destructive would an antimatter bomb be? Could neutrinos explain matter-antimatter asymmetry? Let's delve into the answers to these questions with a comprehensive scientific perspective. The existence of the universe poses a paradox. According to the standard model of particle physics, the Big Bang should have produced matter and antimatter in identical amounts. Antimatter, which is essentially a counterpart to matter with opposite charge for every particle, should annihilate matter upon contact, leaving behind nothing but light in a barren universe. Yet the presence of galaxies, stars, planets and life itself, with virtually no antimatter, presents a conundrum known as the matter-antimatter asymmetry. This fundamental puzzle remains one of the biggest unanswered questions in physics today. Despite its science fiction sounding name, antimatter is not a theoretical construct, but a tangible reality, mirroring matter in all aspects, except for having opposite electrical charges. For example, where an electron carries a negative charge, its antimatter counterpart, the positron, bears a positive one. This relationship extends across all known particles, rendering antimatter and matter nearly indistinguishable save for their charge. We've gleaned much about antimatter through studies in radioactive decay and the workings of particle accelerators, establishing that for every particle of matter, there exists an antimatter analog. Yet, the common association of antimatter with explosive annihilation upon contact with matter paints a dramatic picture of its potential. This annihilation process, converting matter and antimatter back into pure energy in the form of high-energy gamma rays, underscores a fundamental cosmic conundrum. According to prevailing theories, the Big Bang should have produced equal amounts of matter and antimatter, mingling in the early universe's dense, hot plasma. Constant collisions should have led to their mutual destruction, balanced by pair production, the creation of matter and antimatter pairs from high-energy photons. This equilibrium suggests that as the universe cooled and expanded, annihilations should have left nothing but light. Yet the reality is starkly different. The universe is overwhelmingly composed of matter, with virtually no antimatter to be found. This absence contradicts the expected cosmic balance and points to an anomaly in the early universe where, for reasons unknown, matter slightly outnumbered antimatter. This slight discrepancy, with about one extra particle of matter for every billion antimatter particles, suggests an imbalance that current physics struggles to explain. Despite matter and antimatter being nearly identical, with their interactions governed by the same fundamental forces, something tipped the scales in favor of matter's survival. Investigations have revealed that the weak nuclear force, responsible for certain types of radioactive decay, might interact differently with matter and antimatter. This discovery hints at an underlying asymmetry that could contribute to the matter-antimatter imbalance. Yet, these observations alone don't fully resolve the enigma. They suggest that the answer might lie in rare processes that slightly favor matter's production or survival, or perhaps in new physics that extends beyond the standard model. This model, while robust, fails to incorporate gravity or explain the observed imbalance fully. The pursuit of a grand unified theory, or modifications to the standard model, represents the frontier of physics, seeking to unify the fundamental forces and shed light on the early universe's conditions. This quest not only aims to elucidate the matter-antimatter mystery, but also to deepen our understanding of the universe's fundamental laws. This journey into the heart of physics, exploring antimatter, the weak force, and the potential beyond the standard model, is as much about the process of discovery as it is about finding answers. It's a testament to the complexity of the universe and the human drive to understand our place within it. Solving the antimatter puzzle will not only explain why the universe exists as it does, but also push the boundaries of our knowledge to new horizons. Thank you Squarespace 
for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for establishing a captivating online presence and running your business effortlessly, covering everything from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics. With Squarespace's user-friendly templates, crafting the website of your dreams is a breeze. No coding knowledge or costly designers required. Simply drag and drop your way through the customization process. The intuitive interface puts everything at your fingertips, making it easy to bring your vision to life. Beyond the ease of design, Squarespace provides robust analytics tools, offering valuable insights into your audience. Gain an understanding of your traffic sources and identify the content that resonates most with your audience. This knowledge empowers you to refine your content, ensuring that your digital presence continues. Whether you're launching a personal blog, showcasing a portfolio, or establishing an online store, Squarespace offers a comprehensive solution. Start with a free trial at squarespace.com. When you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash at big scientific questions to enjoy a 10% discount on your first purchase of a website or domain. It's the year 1928, and over the previous 25 years, the brightest minds of the era have unlocked two fundamental secrets of the cosmos. Einstein's theories of relativity transformed our perception of movement, space, and time, while the nascent field of quantum mechanics revolutionized our grasp on the universe's elementary particles. In 1928, a groundbreaking revelation fused these theories, revealing the quantum structure of the universe and predicting antimatter's existence. By this time, Einstein and Planck had established that light possesses both particle and wave characteristics. Furthermore, Louis de Broglie had demonstrated the wave-particle duality inherent in all matter. Figures like Bohr, Heisenberg, Born and Pauli assembled a mathematical framework to describe the peculiar behavior of subatomic particles. In 1926, Erwin Schrödinger introduced his renowned equation, encapsulating this new model by illustrating how wave functions evolve over time, enabling predictions about quantum system behaviors, including the double-slit experiment's interference pattern. However, a glaring issue was evident. Firstly, the Schrödinger equation clashed with the principles of relativity. In the realm of relativity, space and time are deeply interconnected, seamlessly transitioning between each other with changes in observational perspective. Contrarily, the Schrödinger equation models a particle's wave function evolution based on a singular time frame, usually that of the observer, ignoring relativity's stipulation that time's flow varies with speed. This discrepancy renders the equation applicable only to particles moving at relatively slow velocities, a significant limitation given the frequent near-light speed movement of subatomic particles. Secondly, the Schrödinger equation simplifies particles to mere wave functions, lacking any intrinsic qualities, despite our current understanding that many fundamental particles possess an intrinsic characteristic known as spin. This doesn't imply physical rotation, but does contribute to a type of quantum angular momentum. For instance, the spin of electrons influences their alignment with magnetic fields, similarly to how a spinning electric charge would. Spin orientation, such as upwards or downwards, varies. Wolfgang Pauli, an Austrian physicist, first broached the concept of quantum spin. To account for the distinct energy levels of electrons within atoms, Pauli deduced that electrons must adhere to a principle now recognized as the Pauli exclusion principle, which asserts that no two electrons can share the same quantum state applicable to all fermions. In atoms, this principle would suggest a limit of one electron per atomic orbital, defined as a quantum state. Nonetheless, observations show two electrons per orbital, leading Pauli to propose an unseen quantum state. Pauli introduced an internal electron property with two potential states, termed up and down, enabling two electrons to exist in the same energy level without breaching the Pauli exclusion principle by sharing a quantum state. This novel quantum state was later identified as representing spin, with the up and down states indicating the angular momentum axis's orientation. These are now referred to as spinors, embodying two component wave functions. Ignoring spin in the classical Schrödinger equation can work for rough estimates, but when magnetic fields are in play, the orientation of spin becomes crucial. Thus, for electrons moving swiftly or within electromagnetic fields, the Schrödinger equation fails to provide accurate predictions. This challenge captivated Paul Dirac, a distinguished British physicist, 
who aimed to devise a version of the Schrödinger equation that was compatible with relativity for electron behavior. His approach began with relativity, incorporating Einstein's iconic E equals mc squared equation, including momentum, and applying quantum mechanical formulas for energy and momentum, leading to a complex outcome. However, Dirac's breakthrough came from a simple concept that transformed the complex mathematics into a strikingly straightforward and elegant equation. This solution demanded a deeper exploration into the electron structure, requiring a four-component spinner instead of Pauli's two-component version, introducing two additional enigmatic components. Despite the mystery of these extra components, the elegance of the equation convinced Dirac of its significance. The Dirac equation, symbolized by PSI, accurately describes electron space-time behavior, integrating quantum mechanics and relativity. The equation's success was monumental, yet it raised further questions, particularly regarding the electron's two extra degrees of freedom. Calculations using the Dirac equation revealed a perplexing possibility. Electrons could occupy negative energy states, suggesting bizarre phenomena like an electron emitting infinite energy. This scenario contradicted observed reality. Dirac theorized the existence of the Dirac sea to explain this, envisioning an infinite ocean of electrons filling all negative energy states. In this model, observable electrons are those with positive energy floating atop this sea. The concept of the Dirac sea implied that removing an electron would leave a hole, behaving as a distinct particle with mass and opposite electric charge. This interaction, where a positive energy electron meets a hole, would result in annihilation, releasing massive energy, a process mirroring what we recognize as antimatter. Although the Dirac sea as a literal concept is outdated, it laid the groundwork for quantum field theory, which posits that fields associated with elementary particles permeate space. These fields, akin to membranes with a base energy level, usually zero, manifest particles as localized energy vibrations. Ultimately, Dirac's theory of negative energy solutions led to the discovery of antimatter, specifically through the observation of the positron in cosmic rays by Carl Anderson, shortly after Dirac's proposal. Antimatter exists as vibrations in the same quantum field as matter, its discovery firmly rooted in Dirac's innovative four-component electron model. The additional components discovered by Dirac represent the antimatter equivalent of the electron's spin orientations, one set for the electron's spin and another for the positrons, culminating in a four-part spina. Essentially, electrons and positrons are inseparable, embodying positive and negative energy states of the same vibrational pattern within the electron quantum field. This concept is even more intricate and fascinating than initially presented, promising further exploration in time. Every fundamental particle is associated with a quantum field and possesses an antimatter counterpart. Similar to the hypothetical holes in the Dirac sea, antimatter particles carry the same mass as their matter counterparts, but bear an opposite electrical charge. This mass is concrete, not a form of negative mass as the term negative energy might suggest. When matter and antimatter counterparts collide, they obliterate each other, liberating a tremendous amount of tangible energy. A small amount of antimatter, even as little as a penny's worth, could power a substantial rocket into space. Dirac's fusion of quantum mechanics with relativity unearthed a mirror dimension to our universe through the anticipation of antimatter. This breakthrough was crucial for the advent of quantum fields and quantum field theory leading to the standard model of particle physics, our most refined explanation of reality's fundamental nature. In our cosmos, antimatter is considered the most valuable element as it potentially holds the key to understanding why anything at all exists in our universe. For every particle in existence, there's a corresponding antiparticle that mirrors it in every aspect, except for having an opposite charge and spin. For example, electrons are paired with positrons, protons with antiprotons, and so forth. The annihilation occurs when matter meets antimatter, leading both to vanish, leaving behind just two photons to disseminate their energy. This phenomenon also works inversely. Particle and antiparticle pairs can emerge from sheer energy. This process is believed to be how the universe's very first particles came into being shortly after its inception. Given that particles and antiparticles are produced in equal measure, logic dictates there should have been an identical quantity of each at the dawn of time. 
The more pressing question then becomes, why does matter exist at all? Ideally, all would have been obliterated, leaving nothing but a light-filled void. The prevailing theory suggests the universe began with a slight surplus of matter over antimatter. If there were marginally more particles than antiparticles, nearly all would have been annihilated, resulting in a universe replete with photons and scarcely any surviving particles without a counterpart to annihilate. Presently, the ratio of photons to matter particles is about a billion to one, implying that for every billion matter particles that were annihilated, only one remained. This discrepancy introduces a profound mystery. Why was there a one in a billion excess of particles over antiparticles? It indicates a fundamental asymmetry in the universe's treatment of particles and antiparticles. This asymmetry suggests that the universe doesn't regard particles and antiparticles with the same neutrality. Many physicists believe the resolution to this puzzle lies in the universe's fundamental symmetries, or more accurately, in their violations. Physicists once thought the universe was based on three key symmetries, charge conjugation, C, parity inversion, P, and time reversal, T, suggesting that if you applied these transformations to a particle, it should turn into its antiparticle. This idea, known as CPT symmetry, implies that the universe should treat matter and antimatter equally. However, experiments have shown that these symmetries can be broken. The first sign came from the Cobalt-60 experiment, which proved that the universe does not behave the same when viewed as a mirror image, challenging the notion of parity. Further studies on the decay of K-mesons indicated that the combined symmetry of charge and parity, CP, could also be violated, suggesting a possible explanation for why there's more matter than antimatter in the universe. Despite these findings, the overall CPT symmetry has held up so far, suggesting that any violations of CP and T might balance out. But our understanding of the universe is still incomplete, especially when it comes to phenomena like dark energy, dark matter, and the imbalance of matter versus antimatter. Future theories, including string theory, might challenge or confirm CPT symmetry. Testing for CPT symmetry involves comparing the properties of particles and antiparticles, which requires creating and studying antimatter, a challenging and expensive process. For instance, creating antihydrogen costs an estimated $62.5 trillion per gram. Fortunately, for CPT studies, only a few atoms of antimatter are needed, significantly lowering the cost of experiments. CERN's Alpha experiment is at the forefront of these studies, using antiprotons from a proton synchrotron to create antihydrogen. By confining antihydrogen in a magnetic trap and studying its behavior, scientists hope to detect any deviations from expected behavior that could indicate a violation of CPT symmetry. Alpha has already tested CPT invariance to a precision of 16 parts per billion and plans to increase this precision with the help of a new antiproton decelerator, Alina, and a new experiment setup, Alpha G which will test how antiatoms behave under gravity. These efforts are crucial for deepening our understanding of the universe's fundamental symmetries and could lead to new discoveries about the matter-antimatter imbalance and the nature of the universe itself. As we journey through the cosmic tapestry that forms our universe, we encounter the enchanting and enigmatic realms of galaxies, stars and planets all composed of the material that makes up the fabric of our everyday existence. Yet, nestled within the vast unknown, lies a concept so intriguing that it challenges the very foundations of our understanding. The hypothesis of a mirror universe, a parallel dimension where the rules of physics as we know them may hold, but the actors are entirely different. Antimatter, the bizarro twin of matter, with reverse charges, parity, and time. In the 19th century, the study of matter took monumental strides with the discovery and classification of elements, leading to the early versions of the periodic table. This era of discovery paved the way for speculation about the existence of a form of matter that was, in every sense, the negative image of the world we know. However, it wasn't until 1929 that theoretical ground was broken by physicist Paul Dirac, who, from the depths of the Schrödinger equation, predicted the existence of anti-electrons. These particles, later observed by Carl Anderson in cosmic ray experiments as positrons, marked the beginning of our journey into the realm of antimatter, a journey propelled further by cosmic rays, those natural particle accelerators that streak across our skies. By the mid-20th century, 
the Bevatron Proton Accelerator had ushered us into an era where antiparticles could be created by human hands. The discovery of the antiproton and the antineutron in quick succession hinted at the possibility of entire antiatoms, a possibility that was realized with the creation of antihydrogen and later antilithium. These discoveries were monumental, yet the production of antimatter was painstakingly slow, a challenge that was dramatically transformed in 2008 with a novel method developed by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. This method, involving the use of a laser to blast electrons through gold, significantly increased the yield of positrons, marking a new era in antimatter creation. However, the creation of antimatter was only half the battle. Containing it became the next frontier, a challenge met with ingenuity at CERN in 2011, where 309 antihydrogen atoms were trapped, some lasting up to 1,000 seconds. This feat was a leap towards understanding, yet it underscored the sheer difficulty of working with antimatter, which, upon contact with matter, annihilates in a burst of pure energy, a fact that makes its containment not just a scientific challenge, but a potentially hazardous one. The existence of antimatter raises profound questions about the universe's composition. Following the Big Bang, matter and antimatter annihilated each other in vast quantities, yet, mysteriously, matter prevailed. This asymmetry, highlighted by the behavior of the K-meson, violates what physicists call CP symmetry, suggesting a preference for matter over antimatter in the universe's underlying laws. This violation points to the possibility of a deeper imbalance in the fundamental symmetries of physics, an imbalance that could hint at the existence of a mirror universe where antimatter reigns supreme. The concept of a mirror universe is not just a flight of fancy, but grounded in the principles of CPT symmetry, charge, parity, and time reversal. This symmetry suggests that a universe of antimatter, reflected and time reversed, could exist parallel to our own, obeying the same laws of physics. Such a universe, born from the same Big Bang that created our matter-dominated cosmos, could provide an elegant explanation for the matter-antimatter asymmetry we observe. Yet the existence of such a mirror universe remains speculative, a tantalizing mystery that lies just beyond our current scientific reach. Detecting a parallel universe composed of antimatter is a daunting task, akin to finding the proverbial needle in a cosmic haystack. Instead of venturing into the unknown in search of antimatter galaxies, we turn our gaze closer to home, pondering the implications of antimatter within our own universe. The discovery of antimatter stars, though yet to be realized, would open new avenues for understanding the cosmos and the fundamental forces that shape it. Our journey through the universe, propelled by curiosity and the relentless pursuit of knowledge, continues to unfold. As the James Webb Space Telescope scans the heavens, revealing galaxies and stars that defy our expectations, the search for antimatter and the secrets it holds remains a beacon of hope. It reminds us that, in the vast, indifferent expanse of the cosmos, there are still mysteries to unravel, knowledge to acquire, and perhaps other universes to discover. The quest to understand the universe, with its myriad of wonders and enigmas, is a testament to the human spirit's unyielding desire to reach beyond the known, to explore the ultimate frontier of existence. The most fascinating aspect is the existence of a sinister counterpart to our universe. What is this enigmatic counterpart? And what transpires upon venturing into it? The basis for hypothesizing a mirrored version of the universe lies in the principle of CPT symmetry. The C in this acronym stands for charge conjugation, indicating that each fundamental particle possesses a counterpart with the reverse charge. This includes anti-neutrons, electrons, positrons, or anti-electrons, among others. Every particle identified by researchers is paired with a counterpart. P denotes spatial symmetry, meaning all directions in our three-dimensional realm have corresponding opposite directions. T signifies that alongside the progression of time forward, there exists a symmetrical progression backwards. Such symmetry was present at the very inception of our universe. In the initial nano and picoseconds following the Big Bang, matter and antimatter were distributed evenly. Shortly thereafter, for every billion pairs of particles and antiparticles, one extra particle prevailed. In the segment of the cosmos we can observe, no substantial concentrations of antimatter have been found. This led scientists to question why this perfect symmetry was disrupted 
and where the vast amounts of antimatter vanished. If the entire expanse of antimatter had remained, our universe would have ceased to exist shortly after its inception due to annihilation. When a particle and its antiparticle collide, they vanish in a burst of light, releasing immense energy. Consequently, physicists initially posited that there was a surplus of matter over antimatter, with the remaining matter constituting the universe as we know it. However, this theory presented numerous mathematical discrepancies, prompting the search for alternative explanations. Researchers from the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics in Canada, led by Neil Turok, have put forward a theory of their own. They hypothesize that immediately following the Big Bang, the universe as we know it emerged in one direction, while an anti-universe, composed entirely of antimatter and where time flows from the future to the past, was born in the opposite direction. Thus, at this very moment, an antimatter version of you could be sitting inversely in front of a reversed computer, already aware of how this video concludes, as it perceives time in reverse. This ignites numerous inquiries. What does existence resemble in a realm entirely made of antimatter? Is interaction with the antimatter universe a possibility? To unravel this enigma, scientists embarked on creating antiparticles within labs. The discovery of the first positrons, or anti-electrons, in cosmic rays dates back to 1932. By 1955, researchers at Berkeley had successfully isolated antiprotons. Subsequent technological advancements enabled physicists to produce not merely antiparticles, but complete antiatoms, including antihelium and antihydrogen, though initially these were challenging to examine. When antiatoms meet hydrogen atoms, they annihilate in 172 milliseconds. Scientists have extended antiparticles' life by using electromagnetic traps, enabling antihydrogen atoms to last up to 1,000 seconds by 2011 and synthesizing 80 for study by 2014. There are plans to move antimatter for further tests by 2022, yet understanding of antimatter remains incomplete. Entering the anti-universe would lead to instant annihilation, releasing vast energy, potentially providing a dramatic spectacle or wiping out life in the mirror universe. The energy released from a gram of antimatter reacting with matter equals a 21.5 kiloton explosion, with an average person's mass causing an explosion equivalent to nearly 77,000 fat man bombs. Your body naturally emits 180 antiparticles an hour from potassium-40 decay, which are instantly annihilated, showing a natural but minuscule presence of antimatter. Extracting antimatter could theoretically yield vast wealth, as a milligram of positrons was valued at $25 million in 2006, and a gram of anti-hydrogen at $62.5 trillion in 1999. But the dangers and time travel challenges to accessing the mirror world make it a formidable endeavor. The anti-universe is theorized to predate the Big Bang, placing it over 14 billion years in the past. Even if navigating near antiparticles becomes feasible, overcoming the monumental hurdle of time travel to the distant past remains. While time travel is deemed theoretically plausible within our universe, venturing into the anti-universe remains a speculative notion. Yet it's intriguing to consider that our reality might indeed be the anti-universe. Some theorists posit that regardless of which side of the Big Bang we exist on, our perception of matter and the flow of time would remain unchanged, progressing only forward. Despite the lack of direct interaction with the anti-universe, our worlds continually affect one another. Every scientific experiment that results in the creation or annihilation of particles simultaneously generates or extinguishes an antiparticle. Despite our desires, any potential contact with the anti-universe would likely culminate in mutual annihilation. The hypothesis of a mirrored version of our universe, including ourselves, fundamentally challenges our understanding of reality. Nevertheless, recent theories have emerged that might refute the anti-universe's existence altogether. The primary argument for its existence hinges on the noticeable scarcity of antimatter in our observable universe. Yet, an alternative explanation proposed by researchers at Brookhaven National Laboratory in the United States and the University of Kansas points to the Higgs Troika. This trio of particles, including the famed Higgs boson, or God particle, is unique for generating immense energy and rapidly decaying into ordinary matter particles, thereby obliterating nearly all antimatter. However, of the three hypothesized bosons, only one has been detected thus far, leaving room for the anti-universe theory to persist.
Across the cosmos, a consistent pattern emerges wherever we explore. From the vast voids between galaxies, through the plasma-drenched expanses that envelop galaxies and their clusters, to the compact realms of star clusters, individual stars, and planetary systems, everything observable is composed exclusively of matter, not antimatter. The exact process remains unidentified, but the universe exhibits an imbalance, favoring matter over antimatter since the dawn of time, resulting in all structures within our observable universe being crafted from matter alone. Black holes are born from the collapse of dense materials, implying that every black hole in our universe has formed from matter rather than antimatter. Yet the concept of an antimatter black hole raises intriguing possibilities. Would it behave differently from its matter counterpart? Particularly, what phenomena might unfold if an antimatter black hole were to merge with a black hole made of matter? The response to this intriguing question might be unexpectedly reliant on the level of detail with which one can observe. According to the principles of Einstein's general relativity, the composition of black holes is of no particular concern to their formation. Gathering enough mass into a sufficiently compact area of space will create a gravitational field strong enough to prevent anything moving slower than a certain velocity from breaking free. Increase the mass, and the escape becomes increasingly difficult. Achieving escape would require even greater speeds. Unfortunately, there's an ultimate speed limit for anything in our universe, the speed of light in a vacuum. Within the realm of general relativity, when the velocity necessary to escape a region's gravitational clutches surpasses the speed of light, this sets the stage for a black hole's creation. The event horizon is distinctly defined as the threshold between zones of potential escape and inevitable capture. Among the pivotal theorems of general relativity, it's highlighted that a black hole's memory is constrained to a few specific attributes. Its mass, electric charge, angular momentum, and possibly, though theoretically, its magnetic charge. These features, collectively referred to as the hair of a black hole, dictate the shape and intrinsic properties of a black hole's interior, yet make no distinction regarding the diverse properties of the material that formed the black hole. Put another way, were you to compare a black hole composed entirely of neutrons to another identical one composed entirely of anti-neutrons, both black holes would possess identical mass, charge, and angular momentum. This equivalence is supported by a vast array of particle physics experiments and several verifiable theorems, including the CPT theorem. It establishes that every fundamental and composite particle existing as matter has a corresponding antimatter version with the same mass, but with angular momentum and electric charge that are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. When matter and antimatter particles collide, they annihilate each other, converting their mass into energy as per Einstein's E equals mc squared equation. Despite this, a black hole, whether formed from matter or antimatter, behaves identically according to general relativity. It forgets its original composition and exhibits the same gravitational properties, including mass, shape of the event horizon, gravitational pull, and emission of gravitational waves. Both types of black holes would merge in the same way, with about 10% of the smaller object's mass converting into gravitational radiation during the merger. However, general relativity doesn't account for all aspects of the universe, as quantum mechanics shows differences between matter and antimatter. But if black holes are formed from matter or antimatter with the same mass and electric charge, they would appear indistinguishable in terms of mass, charge, and spin under general relativity, regardless of their composition. From a quantum viewpoint, black holes could differ based on their baryon and lepton numbers, suggesting quantum characteristics are preserved on the event horizon, despite general relativity's indifference to such distinctions. This concept feeds into the black hole information paradox, proposing that information about a black hole's composition isn't lost but stored, potentially as a form of quantum memory on its event horizon. This aligns with the principle that the universe's entropy should not decrease, indicating that information must be conserved. For black holes formed from antimatter, it's theorized their event horizons could carry signatures of their quantum origins. Observers would note that particles entering a black hole have their states spread across its surface. As the black hole emits Hawking radiation or gravitational radiation, it's expected to also re-emit the conserved information, adhering to entropy principles and suggesting a mechanism for preserving information about its original matter. 
differences between black holes formed from matter versus antimatter, if any, are expected to be extremely subtle and beyond our current ability to detect or theorize. This area of physics, involving quantum characteristics of black holes and their potential observable effects, remains largely unexplored and not well understood. Presently, no definitive methods exist to measure such quantum distinctions, especially through gravitational wave signatures from black hole mergers, which are key predictions of general relativity, but might not reveal quantum information. This situation highlights a major open question in physics. The search for a quantum theory of gravity that could reconcile quantum mechanics with general relativity. Such a theory could potentially reveal differences in the behavior of matter versus antimatter black holes, possibly through unique properties in the radiation emitted from their mergers, like distinct polarizations or quantum numbers in gravitational waves, akin to photons in electromagnetic waves. Black holes, with their intense gravity and mysterious essence, challenge our fundamental understanding of physics and space-time. Imagining the destruction of a black hole ventures into the realm of science fiction, where hypotheses range from bombarding them with rockets, firing powerful lasers, to the seemingly outlandish idea of hurling entire planets into their voracious abysses. Yet, these fantastical efforts would only serve to augment the mass of these cosmic behemoths, further illustrating the paradoxical nature of attempting to neutralize such formidable objects. Among the myriad of speculative strategies, the use of antimatter as a means to combat black holes has emerged as a particularly intriguing concept. Antimatter, the mirror image of the matter that constitutes the observable universe, possesses properties diametrically opposed to that of regular matter, with the notable exception of mass. For instance, an anti-electron, positron, shares the same mass as its matter counterpart, the electron. When matter and antimatter converge, they annihilate each other, not nullifying into non-existence, but transmuting into pure energy, as dictated by Einstein's iconic equation, E equals mc squared. This equation underscores the profound relationship between mass and energy, suggesting that they are but two forms of the same essence. This theoretical framework leads to a speculative and intriguing scenario, the collision of a matter-based black hole with an antimatter counterpart, both of identical mass. Intuition might lead one to anticipate that such an encounter would culminate in their mutual annihilation, transforming their combined mass entirely into energy. However, the peculiar nature of black holes, entities whose gravitational pull is so intense that not even light can escape, complicates this scenario. The energy resulting from the annihilation of matter and antimatter would be instantaneously ensnared by the gravitational grip of the black hole, contributing to its growth rather than diminishing it. Thus, a collision between a matter black hole and an antimatter black hole would not result in their eradication, but in the birth of a larger, more massive black hole. The practical aspects of generating antimatter add another layer of complexity to this speculative scenario. Antimatter, the most expensive substance to manufacture on Earth, is produced in minuscule quantities within the confines of particle accelerators. NASA estimates the cost of producing a single gram of antihydrogen at an astronomical $62.5 trillion. While the Large Hadron Collider and similar facilities flirt with the theoretical possibility of creating microscopic black holes, including those composed of antimatter, the financial and scientific hurdles are formidable. The exorbitant costs associated with antimatter production, not to mention the hypothetical creation of antimatter black holes, render any practical application in neutralizing black holes a distant fantasy. The discourse on antimatter and black holes, rather than offering a tangible method for the destruction of these cosmic phenomena, highlights the intricate and bewildering complexities of our universe. The potential merger of a matter and an antimatter black hole, far from leading to their annihilation, would instead forge a more massive black hole. This realization spares humanity the astronomical expense of antimatter production and beckons us to delve deeper into the enigma of black holes. As we continue to explore and unravel the mysteries surrounding these celestial phenomena, our journey through the cosmos is marked by an insatiable quest for knowledge. Let us then embrace the enigmatic nature of black holes, their capacity to challenge our preconceptions and the perpetual inquiries they provoke as we boldly venture into the vast unknown, ever in awe of the universe's wonders.
Within the cutting-edge confines of CERN, one of the globe's most sophisticated scientific research centers, physicists have undertaken a mission to decode yet another of gravity's deep-seated puzzles, the behavior of antimatter in free fall. Do these enigmatic particles descend as their matter counterparts do? To find out, they've initiated experiments that involve dropping antimatter in controlled environments. This investigation is nestled within the broader discipline of particle physics, which seeks to understand the universe's most fundamental elements. Our known universe is essentially composed of a few types of subatomic particles, electrons, protons, and neutrons. Interestingly, each particle in the universe has an antimatter counterpart, typically identified by prefixing the term anti to its name. Thus, the antimatter version of an electron is known as an anti-electron, or more commonly, a positron. This nomenclature underscores a crucial distinction between matter and antimatter pairs. Their electrical charges are opposite. Electrons carry a negative charge, whereas their antimatter equivalents, the positrons, bear a positive charge of equal magnitude. Aside from their charge, these two types of particles are virtually indistinguishable, possessing identical mass and dimensions. However, our understanding of antimatter remains incomplete, largely due to the challenges inherent in its study. When antimatter and matter particles of the same kind come into contact, they obliterate each other, emitting a burst of energy. Although scientists have the capability to create antimatter using sophisticated equipment like particle accelerators, maintaining its stability is another matter. Antimatter often encounters ambient matter, leading to its rapid annihilation. Nonetheless, advances in science and technology have not only enabled the production of antimatter in greater volumes, but also its containment and preservation for extended durations. Typically, the process of handling antimatter involves encasing it within a vacuum chamber to avoid unintended reactions with air molecules, and utilizing a magnetic field to keep the antiparticles suspended, preventing them from contacting the chamber's solid boundaries. This method has become so refined that antimatter is now employed in practical applications, such as in PET scans to detect malignant tumors. Yet, antimatter remains shrouded in enigmas. A major puzzle is the scarcity of antimatter in the cosmos, especially when juxtaposed with the abundance of normal matter. This disparity troubles physicists, since prevailing theories suggest that, given their identical nature save for their electrical charge, matter and antimatter should have been produced in equal measures at the universe's inception. Fortunately for our existence, a minuscule imbalance allowed the survival of regular matter over the annihilative encounter with its antimatter counterpart during the universe's nascent moments. Rather than conjecturing that the universe was born with unequal quantities of matter and antimatter, some researchers propose the existence of a natural force that discriminates between the two. One hypothesis posits that gravity might exert a different influence on antimatter compared to matter, despite their supposed identical mass. Should this theory hold true, it would challenge the core of Einstein's equivalence principle, a foundational pillar of his theory of general relativity. The principle underlying the theory posits that gravity treats all mass equally, without regard to its origin. Hence, experimental physicists anticipate no variance in gravity's effect on antimatter compared to matter. Yet, this assumption doesn't justify a cessation of scientific inquiry or adopting a complacent attitude towards established theories. Indeed, the essence of scientific exploration mandates the empirical testing of our hypotheses. This ethos leads us to the Alpha-G experiment at the renowned CERN Particle Physics Laboratory. The experiment stands out for its complexity, involving the creation of antimatter through particle collisions, innovative techniques to cool the produced antimatter to near absolute zero temperatures, and the utilization of potent magnetic fields for its containment and manipulation. Yet fundamentally, Alpha-G employs a straightforward approach. The core activity involved placing antihydrogen atoms in a containment vessel and observing their response to gravity, reminiscent of Galileo's legendary experiment from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Antihydrogen, the antimatter counterpart to the most abundant and lightest atom, hydrogen, is structured with a positively charged positron orbiting a negatively charged antiproton, mirroring hydrogen's neutral charge configuration. The rationale behind using whole atoms of antimatter as opposed to individual antiprotons or positrons is tied to the overwhelming strength of electromagnetic forces compared to gravitational forces. A neutrally charged atom is less susceptible to interference from ambient electromagnetic fields 
allowing a purer assessment of gravity's influence. In their experiment, dropping around 100 anti-hydrogen atoms within their sophisticated setup revealed that approximately 80% descended through the containment vessel. At first glance, the dynamics of atomic interactions, where the kinetic energy from collisions can overpower gravitational pull, explain why not all atoms fall immediately. This outcome, with 80% of anti-hydrogen atoms falling, aligns with simulation predictions for both antimatter and matter, suggesting a similar gravitational response. The initial findings, reported in September 2023, leave room for uncertainty, indicating that gravity could potentially be 20 to 50% less effective on anti-hydrogen, a notion that, if confirmed by future, more refined experiments, could revolutionize our understanding of physics. Nevertheless, the Alpha-G experiment has significantly diminished the likelihood that antimatter is completely unresponsive to gravitational forces or behaves in a radically opposite manner, such as rising. While these findings may not herald groundbreaking new physics, they offer a comforting confirmation of our expectations about gravity's universality. The enigma surrounding the fate of antimatter in the universe persists as one of the most compelling mysteries in the field of astronomy. In the nascent moments following the Big Bang, the cosmos was a near-perfect balance of matter and antimatter, with a minuscule excess of matter tipping the scales. This slight imbalance led to the annihilation of nearly equal quantities of matter and antimatter, leaving behind the matter that constitutes the cosmos as we perceive it today. Consequently, our existence, and everything we are familiar with, essentially amounts to the residual leftovers from this primordial cosmic division. The concept that antimatter, rather than having completely disappeared, might be concealed within the universe. In galaxies made entirely of antimatter is a fascinating hypothesis that expands our understanding of cosmic possibilities. In this scenario, galaxies could be brimming with stars, planets, and potentially life forms, all composed of antimatter. The implications are staggering. Any interaction between antimatter and matter would result in annihilation, liberating energy on a scale comparable to gigatons of TNT. This scenario invites us to reimagine the fabric of the cosmos, where parallel realms of matter and antimatter coexist, separated by vast distances, possibly governed by the same physical laws, but destined for catastrophic encounters should they ever meet. The existence of such antimatter galaxies would pose significant questions about the formation, evolution, and distribution of matter and antimatter in the early universe. Challenging current astrophysical models and opening new avenues for exploration in cosmology. Antimatter mirrors matter in nearly every aspect, with atoms possessing identical atomic masses and properties, albeit with reversed charges. For instance, anti-electrons, positrons, carry a positive charge, and anti-hydrogen comprises an antiproton and a positron, as opposed to a proton and an electron in hydrogen. This charge reversal is crucial, as it leads to the annihilation of matter and antimatter upon contact, converting their mass into pure energy. Particle accelerators on Earth can produce antimatter, and it also arises naturally, such as from the processes involving neutron stars or black holes devouring stars, which can emit antimatter particles. Astronomers have even detected vast antimatter clouds within our own Milky Way, primarily generated by black holes and neutron stars consuming their companions. However, the Milky Way and the observable universe predominantly consist of matter, with antimatter revealing its presence through annihilation events with matter. The hypothesis of entire galaxies made of antimatter existing in the universe is theoretically plausible, operating similarly to matter galaxies in isolation. Nonetheless, the presence of such galaxies would likely be betrayed by interactions with surrounding matter emitting radiation from annihilation events. Yet, astronomical observations have not identified such phenomena, with the universe appearing to be composed of quiet, uneventful matter to its observable edges. This absence of evidence does not render antimatter galaxies impossible, provided they remain completely isolated from matter. Even so, such isolation would not prevent detection through the unique particle emissions from antimatter supernova explosions differing significantly from those of matter supernova. One remaining question in the antimatter puzzle is whether antimatter possesses conventional gravity. The prevailing belief is that antimatter and matter galaxies would gravitate towards each other, facilitating annihilation. However, 
the possibility that antimatter exhibits anti-gravity, causing anti-hydrogen atoms to repel from the Earth, remains unconfirmed. Experiments at CERN aim to ascertain whether antimatter particles fall upwards or downwards, potentially revealing that antimatter galaxies could repel regular matter, evading detection through annihilation. The search for antimatter in the universe, akin to the quest for missing socks in a dryer, has yet to yield concrete answers. Despite extensive astronomical searches, the anticipated reservoirs of antimatter, holding vast potential energy, have remained elusive. This ongoing investigation into the universe's missing antimatter not only deepens the mystery, but also exemplifies the relentless pursuit of knowledge that characterizes our exploration of the cosmos. Humans have long distinguished themselves as the planet's most intrepid explorers, pushing the boundaries of discovery and innovation far beyond natural limitations. From the abyssal depths of our oceans to the frost-bitten expanses of the polar regions, we have refused to accept the constraints of gravity as our boundary. In our relentless pursuit of the unknown, we have taken to the skies, creating mechanical wings to traverse the globe, and when the confines of our atmosphere proved too constraining, we turned our gaze upwards, reaching for the stars. Just a mere 66 years after the Wright brothers' first flight, humanity took its first steps on the lunar surface, a testament to our unyielding drive for exploration. However, the vast expanse of the universe remains largely uncharted, with our most advanced probes barely scratching the surface of our solar system. The limitations of chemical propulsion technology have tethered our ambitions to the immediate cosmic neighborhood. Recognizing the need for a quantum leap in propulsion methods, we now stand on the cusp of a new era, transitioning from chemical-based to physics-driven propulsion systems that leverage the principles of subatomic particles. The intrigue of interstellar exploration was reignited in 2016 when astronomers observed a peculiar wobble in Proxima Centauri, a star located 4.2 light-years from Earth. This subtle oscillation, indicative of a gravitational tug, hinted at the presence of a planet approximately 20% larger than Earth, nestled within the habitable zone of its star. The prospect of a neighboring planet potentially harboring life forms the cornerstone of our interstellar aspirations. Yet, the reality of reaching such distant worlds with current propulsion technologies paints a daunting picture. The Voyager 1 spacecraft, the pinnacle of human engineering launched in 1977, travels at an impressive velocity of 15 kilometers per second. Despite its speed, a journey to Proxima Centauri would span 30,000 years, a timeline far beyond human patience and lifespans. In search of viable alternatives, scientists are exploring groundbreaking propulsion technologies, including nuclear fusion, photon-based laser propulsion, and the pinnacle of propulsion science, antimatter propulsion. These technologies promise to compress the journey to neighboring star systems from millennia to mere decades, aligning with the human experience of time. Antimatter presents a revolutionary approach to propulsion. When antimatter comes into contact with matter, the resulting annihilation releases immense energy, primarily in the form of high-energy photons. This phenomenon underpins the concept of antimatter propulsion, where the challenge lies not only in generating and storing antimatter, but also in harnessing the explosive release of energy for controlled propulsion. Positron Dynamics, a pioneering company in this field, is exploring innovative solutions to these challenges. By focusing on the on-demand generation of antimatter through the radioactive decay of unstable nuclei, they circumvent the formidable obstacle of antimatter storage. The company has developed a novel approach to moderating the energy of positrons, the antimatter counterparts of electrons, enhancing the efficiency of their conversion into usable propulsion energy. Their strategy involves thermalizing hot positrons, slowing them down to manageable velocities through a sophisticated moderator composed of silicon carbide sheets. This process significantly increases the yield of usable positrons, which are then directed towards nuclear fuel to initiate controlled annihilation events. These events catalyze nuclear fusion reactions, producing charged particles that can be expelled to generate thrust. The implications of positron dynamics research extend beyond the realm of deep space exploration. The company envisions applications for their propulsion technology in enhancing the operational lifespan of CubeSats, small satellites, that form the backbone of contemporary orbital infrastructure. Additionally, the potential adaptation of antimatter propulsion for commercial aviation could revolutionize air travel, drastically reducing flight times 
and the environmental impact of fossil fuel consumption. Despite the promise of antimatter propulsion, positron dynamics technology is in the early stages of development, grappling with the inherent challenges of translating theoretical science into practical engineering. The path from concept to implementation is fraught with technical and financial hurdles, underscoring the experimental nature of such frontier technologies. As we stand on the brink of a new era in space exploration, the prospect of harnessing antimatter for propulsion invites us to reimagine our place in the universe. The journey towards realizing this technology embodies the human spirit of exploration, pushing the boundaries of what is possible and daring to dream of a future where the stars are within our reach. When matter and antimatter particles meet, they annihilate each other in a burst of energy, according to Einstein's equation E equals mc squared, indicating that the mass of these particles is converted into energy. This process is vastly more efficient than nuclear fission or fusion, which only releases a small fraction of the mass as energy. The destructive capacity of antimatter, were it to be harnessed, is beyond anything currently available to humankind, including nuclear weapons. For perspective, the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima in 1945, which resulted in devastating human casualties and destruction, had an explosive yield equivalent to about 13 to 18 kilotons of TNT. Remarkably, less than half a gram of antimatter could produce an equivalent amount of energy, highlighting its immense power. Expanding on this, the Tsar Bomber, detonated by the Soviet Union in 1961, is the most powerful explosive device ever tested, with a yield of about 50 megatons of TNT. Theoretically, the energy released in the annihilation of approximately 1.5 kilograms of antimatter and an equal amount of matter would match this colossal explosion. Such comparisons not only illustrate the sheer magnitude of energy locked within antimatter, but also underscore the potential for both constructive and destructive applications. In theoretical terms, if one were to detonate 10 kilograms of antimatter, the resultant energy release could rival natural disasters of cataclysmic proportions, such as the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami, which claimed hundreds of thousands of lives and altered the geography of regions. Such an explosion would unleash energies on a scale that could significantly impact the Earth's environment and potentially its rotation, as was the case with the earthquake that shortened the day by microseconds. The potential for antimatter to serve as an ultra-efficient fuel source is equally compelling. In space travel, where the efficiency of fuel is a critical constraint, antimatter could revolutionize interplanetary and interstellar journeys. A spacecraft powered by antimatter, converting mass directly into energy, could drastically reduce the time required to travel between planets or to distant stars, opening new frontiers in space exploration. However, the reality of harnessing antimatter is fraught with challenges. The production of antimatter is an incredibly energy-intensive and costly process, currently beyond the scope of practicality for large-scale applications. Facilities like CERN's Large Hadron Collider can produce only minute quantities of antimatter at exorbitant costs that make the idea of antimatter bombs or fuel more science fiction than feasible science. Moreover, the storage of antimatter presents its own set of formidable hurdles. Antimatter must be kept in an absolute vacuum and suspended within magnetic fields to prevent contact with matter, as any contact would lead to instantaneous annihilation. The longest duration antimatter has been stored under such conditions is measured in minutes, far from the stability required for any practical use. In conclusion, while the concept of antimatter offers a glimpse into a future of unprecedented technological advancements, the bridge between theoretical potential and practical application remains vast. The dual aspects of antimatter, as a source of both immense energy and potential destruction, reflect the broader ethical and technological challenges that come with advancing our understanding and manipulation of the fundamental components of the universe. Neutrinos are enigmatic, nearly massless, and neutral elementary particles that play a crucial role in the makeup of our universe. Despite their elusive nature, neutrinos defy conventional expectations, offering potential insights into one of cosmology's biggest mysteries, why the universe didn't vanish in a burst of light shortly after the Big Bang. Neutrinos exist in three varieties, tau, muon, and electron neutrinos. In the 1960s, the standard model of particle physics was established, 
providing a robust framework for understanding particle interactions for over five decades. What makes neutrinos unique is their unexpected mass, revealed through the discovery of neutrino oscillations. This phenomenon allows neutrinos to change flavors as they travel, indicating they possess a small mass contrary to initial assumptions. For instance, while most neutrinos emitted by the Sun start as electron neutrinos, around two-thirds transform into other types by the time they reach Earth. This behavior could shed light on why the universe remained matter-dominated post-Big Bang. Neutrinos might hold the key to solving the matter-antimatter asymmetry puzzle. Despite the theoretical equality of matter and antimatter in fundamental interactions, our universe is predominantly composed of matter. The early universe should have produced matter and antimatter in equal quantities. However, for reasons not fully understood, for every billion antimatter particles, there was a billion plus one matter particles, suggesting a violation of matter-antimatter symmetry. While quarks, the building blocks of protons, are known to contribute to this imbalance, they cannot fully account for the disparity we observe. Investigating neutrino oscillations might provide further insights into this asymmetry. Research initiatives like the Short Baseline Neutrino Program are exploring the existence of a possible fourth type of hidden neutrino. Moreover, cutting-edge experiments, including Fermilab's DUNE, Deep Underground Neutrino Experiment, aim to illuminate the mysteries of matter-antimatter asymmetry. These studies utilize accelerator-generated neutrino beams, tracking their interactions across various distances through detectors. Despite neutrinos being the most populous massive particles in the universe, detecting their interactions is challenging due to their neutral charge and low interaction probability. Thus, large detectors are necessary to capture a significant number of interactions. Dune's mission will be aided by the development of a liquid argon time projection chamber equipped with an advanced light collection system. This technology, if adopted, promises to accelerate the achievement of Dune's objectives, particularly enhancing our understanding of low-energy phenomena. This advancement is expected to improve observations of solar and supernova neutrinos and the detection of proton decay, a phenomenon theorized but yet to be observed. The development of liquid argon time projection chamber technology is a collective endeavor, currently in the phase of designing proof-of-principle models to assess the feasibility and performance of new sensors. Following this, medium-scale prototypes will be tested with actual neutrino interactions, providing a real-world evaluation of our technological innovations.